Dragonflies. Welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. I'm back with another postcard paint-along, but this one is kind of more just for fun than really with a lot of learning objectives. I'm not going to be teaching you any spectacular tips or tricks. Although, if you haven't ever had a chance to see what happens when you use a full range of values from light to dark, I think you'll enjoy watching the glow come alive in these jack-o'-lanterns as you add the layers and get the darker values in there. But really, this one is just for fun and it's quick and easy, so you can paint a whole bunch of them and send them off to all the little ghosts and goblins on your list. Um, or if you have a child or grandchild around that you might like to do an art project with, this is suitable for even elementary school age kids. And it's always kind of fun for them to get a chance to paint with the good stuff and see what it's really like to use the professional quality materials. And I think you'll find too that most elementary school kids actually treat the materials with a great deal of respect. They're very um, excited about the idea of being able to paint with the grown-up stuff. So if you um, have a young child that you'd like to share your painting um, with, this is a, a good project to start someone off with. Or just a friend who might like to try watercolor and wants a project that's easy and not very intimidating. So let's get started and have some fun with glowing jack-o'-lanterns on the porch. Before we start painting, I want to show you a finished postcard just to give you an idea of how this is going to work. So you can see that there's a yellow underneath these, post, underneath these pumpkins, and in the center it's sort of a paler yellow to suggest kind of the, the candle flame glowing inside the pumpkin. And then in the pumpkins themselves, where the faces have been cut, you can see this little rim of orange. And that's because normally when you carve a pumpkin, you kind of cut into the flesh at an angle so that the inside of the cut marks are a little bit smaller and you get less chance of looking in directly at the candle flame. And so often you see sort of some of the orange pump pumpkin flesh glowing around the edges and that will also help create the sense of light coming from inside these jack-o'-lanterns. And then we have the jack-o'-lanterns themselves and then we have this dark, dark area around which is what makes the light really come out. So we're going to do this pumpkin, these pumpkins in layers and add more and more intense color and darker color as we go. So that will make the light come out and give us this illusion that there are candles inside our jack-o'-lanterns. So first we're going to make our yellow candlelight glowing through the entire page. And I'm going to um, use a paper towel or a tissue to just blot where my candle flames themselves will be and have a slightly paler white area there. So I make a nice big puddle of wash. Always make more than you think you need because you don't want to run out halfway through. And I don't have to lay this wash particularly neatly, but I do want to cover the entire page. And I'm working kind of quickly on this wash because I want to be able to get back to the candle flames and blot those paler areas while they're still wet. So I'm not being super careful to get this wash even. I'm just getting the whole page covered kind of quickly. And then I'm going to come back with my paper towel and just blot out a lighter area in a couple of spots, almost like two little eyes peering out from the painting. And if it's still wet, the color may, may continue to migrate back in a little bit. So I'm going to keep blotting if I need to, just a bit, so that I make sure that they don't close up again completely. They don't have to be super bright white, they just need to be a little bit paler than everything around them. And now we have to let this dry and then we can come back and do the next layer. All right, so the first layer is dry, and now it's time to draw our pumpkins and our pumpkin faces. And as we draw, 
These are sort of representing the candles inside our pumpkins, but we can completely ignore those for the moment because when you put a candle inside a jack-o'-lantern, very often it's wonky and wobbly and doesn't sit right in the center. So don't be trying to worry about centering those in your pumpkins or anything like that. Just draw your pumpkins and it will all work out just fine. So when I drew my pumpkins on this one, I did something a little bit sneaky for a later uh, step. I made my stem go, well, in this case, almost off, but it should have gone all the way off. And I make this pumpkin go off the page. And the reason I did that is then when I come back to do this dark layer, I can do it in sections. I don't have to do the entire thing at once, and that will make it a little easier to manage. So as I draw my pumpkins, I'm going to make my pumpkin shape, but I'm going to make the stem go right off the page. And then I'm going to have these pumpkins sitting a little bit up from the bottom so that I will have room to show a little bit of light falling in front of them. So I don't have to be super careful how I draw them. My pencil lines don't have to be perfect. I am going to indicate where we've cut the top off of that pumpkin to make our jack-o'-lantern. And then this pumpkin, I'm gonna make a sort of a tall and skinny pumpkin that goes up off the page so that when I come back to paint the dark area, I'll have it in three little sections. So I'm just making whatever funny shaped pumpkins I want. You don't have to draw them super well because real pumpkins often, especially the ones we pick for jack-o'-lanterns, are sort of bumpy and lumpy, so that's a good thing. And now I'm just going to draw any kind of jack-o'-lantern face I would like to. So let's see, I think I'll make this one have this kind of eyes this time and maybe a mouth with some funny teeth like this. Can be anything you want. And let's see, how about, let's make this one have kind of angry eyes. We'll make this be kind of a fussy pumpkin. Give him a little nose. And let's see, let's give him kind of a robot mouth. But with teeth. So anything that amuses you. <laughs> so now we're going to mix a nice bright orange. And when we paint over these pumpkins, we're going to paint so that our first layer comes inside our pumpkin inside our pencil lines just a little bit to make this bright orange little rim light. So let's mix up a nice big puddle of a bright orange. So I'm just gonna bring out some more of my yellow. If you have an orange on your palette and you would like to use that, you can. I'm just going to mix mine from a red and a yellow. And I make sure I have plenty because, I, again, I don't want to run out partway through. And now I'm going to cover everything, including the stem. Just go over that stem, right over the top of my pumpkin, right on down the page. And when I get to these eyes, I'm going to come a little bit inside my pencil line. I don't have to be super careful about that outside edge because when I come back with a real dark shadowing on the porch, if I made some boo-boos here, those will all get covered up. So, no stress. The hardest part about this is remembering to come inside the lines. <laughs> come inside my lines so that I see those little brighter orange edges. And see, I'm painting right over where that white dot was, and that's fine because very often that would be kind of where the candle flame is on a jack-o'-lantern. Coming inside the lines down here. And if you forget or goof up a little bit here on coming inside the lines, 
just blame it on the person that carved the jack-o'-lantern. Maybe they didn't do a great job. All the way around with my bright orange. And then it's perfectly fine at this stage if these two pumpkins run into each other. We're going to separate them later with shadows. So I can just keep going right on over to this pumpkin. And the lovely thing about this is if your washes aren't very even or you get little blooms or something, that's perfect because pumpkins have various sorts of blemishes on them often. And a lot of times those are the ones that we choose for jack-o'-lanterns anyway. So if you go back in here and start fiddling and then later you go, oh no, I made a bloom, that's fine. <laughs> that actually works well for this project. All right, so we need to let that layer dry and then we'll come back and do the next layer. Okay, in this next layer, what we're going to be doing is painting over pretty much everything we already painted in the pumpkins, except this time we're going to stop at our pencil lines so that we leave this area a little bit more orange and then we have this, or a little brighter or lighter orange, and then we have this darker, a little bit more red orange and we've left a little bit of a orange glow where we cut the top off to make our jack-o'-lantern and then we're also going to mix a brown so that we can drop in some brown tones to make the ribs on our pumpkin so i'm going to start from an orange that's somewhat like the first layer and add a bit more red to it and then I also want to make it a bit more of a neutral. So um, when we gray down a color or neutralize a color, we do that by adding a bit of the complement. So the complement of orange is blue. So I'm going to take a bit of ultramarine blue and bring it out on my palette and add just a bit of it to this orange. Not a whole lot. I don't want to turn this all into brown, but I just want to add a little bit, make it a little bit neutralized. That's going to help um, indicate that that part of the outside isn't as illuminated as much. And then I also need a puddle of brown for my ribs. So let's take a little bit of this orange over here and add even more blue to it. And that gives us a nice brown. That's probably a little darker even than I want. <laughs> People have asked me, does this cup ever collapse? And the answer is occasionally it does. It just did there, but it doesn't usually make a big mess. So let's pull a little bit more orange over there and have kind of a orangey brown, not quite so dark. If you have a brown on your palette, like burnt umber, for example, you can just pull that out because it's a pretty similar color. So if you'd prefer not to mix this brown, you can just use your burnt umber. And now I'm going to go back over my pumpkins. I'm going to leave that little area of orangey uh, light peeking through around the top where I've cut it off. And I'm going to only come up to my pencil lines around the eyes and mouth. And so again, right over the stem right along the same orange that I did before, except this time I'm going to leave a little gap. So that will suggest that tiny bit of light that peeks out sometimes where you've cut the top off to take out the seeds. And then I'm only going to paint up to my pencil lines. So again, I'll be leaving that lighter orange showing. And I'm working kind of quickly because what I'd like to be able to do is drop in my darker brown for the ribs while this is still wet. So hopefully, while this is still wet, I'll take some of my brown and I'm going to go along the outside perimeter of my pumpkin so that that gives the sense that it's kind of round and that part is starting to turn into the shadow. 
At the bottom, I'm going to add a little extra because there's usually going to be less light, light down below there. And then I'm going to just make some quick little marks with my brush to create these brown shadows where the ribs of the pumpkin are. And if they start to um, disappear too much, I might add a little bit more. I think I want another rib right here too. Get blooms or splotches. It winds up just looking like your pumpkin had a little bit of a blemish on it or there's a shadow there. So you don't have to be real restrained about not touching it. <laughs> this is a good project for people who like to fiddle. Trying to move fairly quickly so I can drop in my brown around the outside to make the shape of my pumpkin a little extra on the bottom. And this one, it's starting to dry and um, I'm thinking I want some more suggestion of brown here. So I'm not even going to worry about what if I get in there and make a bloom because if you do, it actually works great for these pumpkins. So fiddle to your heart's content. This is like, this is the, the bad habits project where you can indulge that bad habit of fiddling with your watercolors and it, and it actually works just fine. <laughs> so if you're one of those people that likes to get back in there and play with it, this is your project. And let's let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll turn out the lights on the porch so that we can see our candles glowing inside our pumpkins. Okay, for this final step, we need this really dark brown that we're going to put around the perimeter. So again, if you happen to have a, a really dark brown like burnt umber and you want to use that, you can, but I'm going to mix mine. And so in English, the word brown is the word that we use for a very, very dark red or orange or red orange. And so what I'm actually going to do is start from a red orange, just like I had in my previous layer. And then I'm going to add plenty of blue to it this time to take it to a nice dark brown. Now, if yours starts to get a greenish tint, which sometimes happens, um, add more red. And again, make more than you think you need because it's really annoying to get halfway through and discover that you've run out and you have to try to match colors. So I'm going to start with this little section between the two pumpkins. And I'm going to just fill that in. And this is where, if I want to reshape anything on the outside of my pumpkins, now is when I can do it. So if I had any boo-boos when I painted my pumpkin shapes and I need to fix them up a little bit, as I come back with this darker outside color, I can clean up the edges of my pumpkins if I need to. So you want to use plenty of wash here. Don't try to spread the paint too far because you want this to be dark. If you start trying to cover too much territory, your wash will wind up being too pale. So I'm making this a nice, what they call a juicy wash. Plenty of liquid, plenty of pigment. And then I'm not going to try to keep spreading it too far because then it will get too pale. So I'm loading my brush frequently to make sure that I have plenty of paint to get that sense of dark. Now, when I get down to my pumpkin, I'd like to have a little bit of light peeking out. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring my brown around underneath my pumpkin, and then I'm going to make sort of a U shape or a V shape down here in front of my pumpkin like this. And I'm going to rinse my brush and 
put just clear water in there. And if that's a little bit too pale, I'll drop in a little bit more brown around the outside. I want to leave just a little paler s section right there. And then again, when I get to the next pumpkin, I'll do the same thing. So I'll come underneath my pumpkin, and then I'll make sort of a, a U shape for where the light might be showing through. Rinse my brush and fill that area in with water. If it's too, still too light, I'll add a little brown around the outside. All right. Let's let the background dry and then we're going to come back and do some finishing touches. All right, so we're almost there. The difference between this one and our finished version is that these pumpkins look a little flat, kind of like paper cutouts. And the reason for that is that the edges around the outside are all very hard, crisp, sharp edges, whereas the edges around these pumpkins are kind of soft and disappearing into the shadows. And then also I've added a little bit more shadowing in some of the ribs on these pumpkins. So that's our last step. And to, to soften the outside edge, what I'm going to do is rinse my brush, dry it off so that it's just damp. I don't want it drippy at all or carrying a lot of water. And then I'm going to put the tip of the brush right along that edge and just wiggle it a little bit sort of back and forth across the edge. So without touching the paper, I'm gonna show you the angle. Instead of going right on the edge in the same shape, I'm going back and forth, kind of wiggling in a very small shape right across the edge. So what I'm trying to do is coax a little of that heavy brown that's outside the pumpkin to come onto the pumpkin. And because my brush is just damp, it's not going to move a lot of the color, but just enough to see how this edge now looks a lot softer than that edge. When you have a really heavy application of paint like that, a damp brush will move a little bit of it. And the trick is I don't want to use so much water that I float away any of my color. I just want to smudge that edge. So again, just taking the tip of my brush, my damp brush, wiggling it back and forth across that edge to smudge that edge and make it soft. Now as I do this, I'm actually going to be picking up some brown color on my brush, so I can probably use that to enhance some of the ribs. So wiggling my brush back and forth, if your brush gets too dry, you can always rinse it and then blot it again because you don't want <clears throat> you don't want the brush to be too wet when you do this, or you'll just make um, too much of the brown rinse away. I just want to wiggle it back and forth, and then if you pick up enough brown, you can add a little bit to those ribs, or you can go pick up a little brown off of your palette and enhance some of your shadows with that as well. And I'm just going to do both. As I go around softening, I'm also going to, if I think I want a little bit of more definition in a rib, I'll pick up just a little bit of brown on my brush, put it on the page. If it looks too hard edged, I'll just smudge it with my fingers. So now this pumpkin starts to have more of an actual shape and this pumpkin still looks a little on the flat side. So the only difference is I've gone in here and softened the outer edges and I've added a little bit more definition to some of the ribs of my pumpkin. So same thing over here. And you don't have to do ev everything on one rib all the same because those also can be kind of lumpy and lopsided on a pumpkin. All right, let's pull the tape and see what we think. It's like magic. <laughs>
all of a sudden they look like they have candles inside them. I want to show you some others. I painted all four of these, and as much as I possibly could as I worked on these four, I tried to use the exact same washes and the exact same techniques. Of course, the faces were all different, but otherwise I tried to apply the paint as much as I could in the same way. And the reason I wanted to show you these is because sometimes people will send me a photo or show me what they're working on in class and they'll say, well, mine doesn't look like yours. And one of the reasons why that could happen is you might be working on a slightly different paper. So if you're mixing your washes to look like the washes that I'm mixing, and then you apply them to a slightly different paper, the outcome might be a little different. And if I had been intending to make these all look alike, I could make some adjustments. Or if I painted these again, I could get them all to look a lot more alike by saying, okay, on these papers, this one I need to make my washes quite a bit stronger, a little bit stronger, and not quite so strong to adjust them so that they come out looking more like this one. Now, Actually, you can usually tell as you're painting what's happening, so I probably could have adjusted as I went, but the first time you work through a tutorial, you're worrying about a lot of other things. So if that happens to you, I just want you to know that that's perfectly normal. <laughs> and as you paint on a particular paper for a while, you'll start to know what does it have to look like in my palette to get a particular result. And you won't take as many attempts to get to the color intensity that you prefer. But don't feel like when you watch a video, mine or anyone else's, that if your result turns out somewhat different, that that necessarily means that you did anything wrong. It might be simply that you need to make some adjustments for your materials and it takes a couple passes through to figure out what those are. Or it might just be that we're different people and we have different visual voices just like we have different speaking voices and that's perfectly okay too. So don't necessarily use mine as the standard. Look at the outcome and decide what you like and then make adjustments based on what you find most appealing and work towards your own style and just have fun with it. Don't feel like you have to be you know, worried about getting it right. There's no right or wrong here. And actually, you know, what carries these postcards, what makes them fun is the funny faces. So just have fun making different faces. Any one of these, you know, bright or duller, you know, either one, they would be fine to pop in the mail and make somebody smile and wish them a happy Halloween. So I hope you do have a happy Halloween. I hope you have fun with this. Happy painting, and I'll see you next time.